Hey, welcome. We're going to talk a little bit about graphing some data using Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets is a lot like most spreadsheet programs, but there are a couple of dif differences between this and Excel if you're familiar with graphing in Excel. Most of the graphs that we're going to do in this class are XY scatter plots. Uh, two-dimensional types of graphs that you've done before in other classes you've usually made them by hand the reason we do this in uh, a spreadsheet program is because as you move on if you'd go on to science in, in college uh, almost nobody does graphs by hand anymore because the spreadsheet programs are much more accurate and they give you more information more quickly that's not to say that it's not important to know how to graph by hand but in this class we do a lot of information or work with the data and um, graphing by a, uh, a spreadsheet program is usually a little bit better. So we're gonna start, uh, I'm gonna take you through the process of, of creating a graph in Google Sheets. It's very simple. Take good notes and you'll have a chance to practice this uh, a little bit later on. To start with, we have to enter our data. And so I have entered already some data here. And oftentimes you wanna know for sure uh, a couple of things about your data before you put it into the sheet. The first thing you wanna know is which of the values are going to be on the x-axis and which are gonna be on the y-axis. We're going to make a graph where volume is on the x-axis and mass is on the y-axis. And so I, I will put in, to save myself a little bit of headache, I'll put the volume first and then the mass. Normally when we talk about this stuff we say mass and then volume. We're going to put the volume first because I want that on the x-axis. And Google Sheets, like most spreadsheet programs, will default. The first column of data it comes to uh, will be the x-axis and what comes next will be the y. So that's why I've put them in this way. The second thing you want to know is whether or not your graph needs to go through the origin. Uh, in this case, it does. I'm looking at volume and mass data. That means I'm thinking about density. And if I decrease the volume of my sample to nothing, then there will be no mass. So there should be a 0, 0. That represents this relationship. So I'm going to add that at the very top here. And I just have a data set here. Uh, I've already done my acceptable range calculation to make sure that all of these values are going to fit within that acceptable range. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about acceptable range and how you would do that uh, as we go. Now I could calculate the densities of these very quickly to see, and that's how I did my acceptable range, but right now I'm just interested in graphing. Okay, so the first step is to select just the numerical data that you want to graph. I should notice, you'll notice that in none of these cells are there any units written. Uh, spreadsheet programs are particularly finicky when it comes to mixed data types inside a cell. Either have all numbers or all letters if you can possibly uh, structure it that way. So I put milliliters up here for volume knowing that every number now that comes down in the A column is representing a number of milliliters and the same thing with grams. I don't have any letters in these cells. I'm going to only select the cells that I want to graph. You notice I'm eliminating or, or ignoring the column headers because I don't want to graph those because there's nothing to graph. So I select my data. I have a couple of options to create the chart. I can go up here and click insert and go down here and hit chart. Or uh, if you look in the toolbar, there's an insert chart button and that's the button I'm going to push. And when I do that, Google Sheets will suggest what it thinks my graph should look like. And it's suggesting a scatter plot, which is good because that's what I want to do. This is the graph I want it to look like. However, if it doesn't, or if you want a different type of graph, you can go to the middle tab, Chart Types, and you can scroll down until you see Scatter, and you can select Scatter. It's already been selected for us because Google Sheets is pretty good at predicting. Okay. Now, once I've got it set, I need to do some tweaking. And the tweaking that I need to do is, well, there's no information on this other than some numbers and dots. I need to know what this graph is all about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a chart title. The title should be something that's descriptive but concise. So I'm going to call this uh, mass versus volume data. That's all I really know about this, okay? And when I click out of that box, it will place it up here for me. I can change the size of it, I can change the color of it, but for now we'll keep it simple. I'll let you pretty up your own graphs on your own, play around with some of these settings. Uh, we need a legend. We're going to put the legend on the right. There it is right there. It's just this little dot. There's not much to it. We'll add to that in just a minute. The next thing is I need to know what my axes are. I see numbers here, but I don't know what do these numbers represent. So I'm going to scroll down 
to where it says axis. And you'll notice that there's a drop down list here and I have choices horizontal and left vertical. I'm going to do both of these. I'm going to start by choosing horizontal and I'm going to type in uh, a label for this axis. This axis, horizontal, remember I was told or I decided that that was going to be my volume. So I'm going to type in the word volume and then in parentheses I'm going to type the unit that these numbers represent because there are no units there. I'm then going to choose the left vertical axis and I'm going to call that, this was my mass value, so I'm going to call that mass and I'm going to put the G for grams in parentheses after that. And when I click out of the box here you'll see that now my labels have shown up, mass and volume and the unit that they're referring to. So all, so far my, my graph now has a lot more information that I can use. The last thing I'm going to do with a linear set of data like this, you can see they're sort of in a straight line already. I'm going to include something called this trend line. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom, I'm going to see where it says trend line and I'm going to choose linear. And it's going to put a line in there for me. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit more because I'm going to change a couple of different things. Right now it's just labeled this trend line, trend line for data series one. Well that's kind of kind of a lame title. It's also not really useful. So the label I'm going to choose is equation, use equation. And what that's going to do is it's going to put the equation for this line. Now that's going to be useful for me later on. Uh, and if you really know a little bit about how lines work and what the, the slope of the line means, you might get some information from that equation uh, that, is, that is pretty useful for this data set. But for now, I'm going to put that in there. I'm also going to choose to show the R squared value. R squared is a value in, in linear regression series in straight line graphs that tells you how close your points are to that trend line. Uh, the maximum value for R squared is 1 and if you have an R squared value of 1 it means that every single point is smack dab on that line. My R squared value is 0.951. That's pretty close to 1. That means a lot of my points are very close to the line. There aren't many that are on it but they're all pretty close and that's good. The closer your R squared value gets to 1 uh, the more precise your data set is. Okay? Now uh, I can change things about the line thickness and the opacity and all that. I'm going to make this 100% uh, opaque. I'm going to change the thickness to, well, I'll leave it at 2 so I can see it so it's not too thick. I can change the color if I want. I want to make this maybe a red trend line. You can do what you want to pretty this up. But the important thing is now I have a line that shows me the linear trend. I can get any coordinates for any point on that line just by putting my pointer right on it. It'll tell me where the, where the uh, values are for it. But I don't really need that right now. Uh, beyond that, you can customize a lot of other things. You can change the background color, you can change the text font, the font color. I'll leave that up to you. Put a little creativity in it and make it your own. When you're done, you hit insert and it's going to put it in the same sheet that your date. Notice it's covering up my data. That's bad. I want to see my data. As a matter of fact, I want to see this graph in much greater detail. I want it bigger. I want it to be its own sheet. So up in here in the little corner there's a little arrow and if I click on that there's a drop down and it says move to own sheet and if I do that I get a nice big version of this graph. See how nice and pretty that is? And I can really look at it and I can see how my mass and volume values vary. You look, I've got a couple here that are pretty far off the line but because I did my acceptable variation they're within the acceptable range of data and uh, so I leave them there even though they're slightly off off the line. Notice also that the trend line doesn't exactly go through zero. That's a limitation of this program. Um, hopefully in the future they'll fix that so that you can you can force the trend line to go through zero. It'll help with the slope of the line which uh, if you haven't figured out what the slope of this line represents I want you to think about it a little bit and see if you can figure it out. Okay. So you'll notice down here on the bottom I've got sheet one, that's where my data is, and I have chart two, that's where my chart is, that's where my graph is. Okay, I can, if I want, um, I could have copied this. You'll see there's some, some things up here where I can copy it, I can save it as an image so that I can put it into lab reports, I can uh, insert it into documents, I can put it online anywhere I want and, may, and keep it in digital format, which is really nice. I can also print it if I want a hard copy to look at. Okay, So, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're not doing a whole lot of data manipulation with creating this chart, it's just creating uh, a graph 
uh, an XY scatter graph with a trend line. It's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, there is a guide, a printed guide for this that I will make available for you and uh, it'll take you through the same steps but in printed form in case that works better for you. But take good notes, make sure you list the steps and, and, and play around with, uh, with Google Sheets and learn the different things that you can do with these graphs. There's a lot of different ways of graphing stuff. Um, it's kind of fun to play with too if you like numbers. Okay, we'll see you in class.